Good morning. We begin our worship today for the second Sunday after the Epiphany with a collective welcoming. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, sent to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known in from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Together, glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise, glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you people, from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Today's Psalm, uh, Psalm 40, verses 1 through 12, we will read it responsively by full verse. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He put, he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Amen. 
Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. In the roll of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, 
You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Morning. I'm not Marcel Marceau, but uh, follow along with the uh, hand movements as I attempt to mime this particular action. I want to take you back to a young 13-year-old Father Marshall, long before there were dreams of priesthood or a call in his heart, just that sense of an ache to help other people. But I was a little uh, junior tenderfoot Boy Scout at Camp Kutaga, in, uh, in my uh, area council going to summer camp and um, lots of different activities there. There was, there was a waterfront with rowboats and canoes and swimming down at the river. There was a pond and a pool for, uh, for learning life-saving techniques. There was a shed for woodcrafts and all those different, you know, it, it, it was Boy Scout camp, it was great. Um, but my favorite place for years was the archery range. I loved going up there because that was the place that I could have a, my hands on a bow. I could, I could learn how to shoot. I didn't like guns, uh, but I did like bow and arrow. That was just something about that that felt primal. So uh, I want to introduce you to this bow that I have in my hands. It's a 60 pound recurve, which means it's a single piece. It doesn't have pulleys. It's not, it's not designed for hunting. It's just a, a target device. And this bow um, is actually unstrung right now. It, I have a bowstring on it, but it's not there. So I'm gonna place it on the ground. You put your foot through the string, bend it, and then hook that on there so that now you have a strung bow. It's bent so that you can see the curve. And over here is a whole pile of arrows. Now arrows are special things. Each one has its own purpose and use. My favorite arrow, which is one that you never use for targeting is called a flu-flu. Over here, a flu-flu arrow. It's an arrow with very large fletching and it's designed actually to go at a low rate. If you're a hunter, that's the kind of thing you use to go after small game up in the trees, but I'm not using flu-flu, we're just using a regular range arrow. It has a little nub end to it that goes through a rubber target down, down field there. So I have this one, it strings on. There are three fletchings on this arrow. There's two that spread at the base and one that comes off the top. And that, the idea is that you do that so that it doesn't strike the bow as you fire it. So now I have this strung. I'm going to draw and you can sight downfield. And the idea here is that you have to get the elevation just right so that the arc of the arrow as it travels hits the target. See if I can. Uh. I don't know if you know this, but I just mimed for you the biblical definition of sin. We think of sin as a performative act, something we do that breaks covenant with God. But actually in the New Testament and even in the Old Testament, the essence of sin is akin to an archer missing the target. The Greek word is hamartia, literally means to miss the thing you're aiming at. You have an intention, you have a resolve, you have, you have a relationship, and you aim for that target so that you can hit and bring home that action, that intention. You can build up that relationship. And hamartia literally means to miss the mark, to fail to connect. Connect to God, connect to the intention, connect to the resolve that it takes to be in a primary relation, relationship with God and the other. As we move through Epiphany, we are marking a transition from the baptism of John, which we had just last week with that resolve of Jesus being, being baptized in the River Jordan by John. John's baptism was one of a repentance of sin, of hamartia, a connection to the resolve to be in a deeper relationship with God and the other, to be clear in our intention and to hit the mark as we aim for it in life to clear the deck and get us ready for the Messiah 
With Jesus's arrival, we have the Messiah. We are preparing for a baptism that is going to raise us up, not just from sin and disconnection from God, but to a resolve to be in a deeper awareness of what it means to walk in resurrection, where not even death can overcome God's love and desire for us to continue and to experience blessing and resolve and grace. This is the depth of God's love for us that we should be absolved from our sin and lifted up, that we shouldn't ever miss the mark. Or when we miss the mark, that we should have, in the way I did with my archery instructor, a hand that literally guides the bow into alignment, that hands us an arrow and helps us to learn how to shoot true. I remember vividly learning how to do archery back in the day and somewhere off in the piles of things that are in our basement where I'm sure there's a little box with all my little archery medallions in it. And each little archery from beginner to intermediate to advanced also has the yardage so you can hit a target at 25 yards, 50 yards, 75 yards, 100 yards. I could almost get to the target at 100 yards. Think about how far that is from here to there and trying to hit that with an arrow you fire from a 60 pound recurve bow. Translate that into life and all the things we intend and miss the mark on. And sometimes it's not just the effects of our own intentions and our own decisions. Sometimes it's just the reality of the world. We're not in the right place. We don't have the right advantage. We lack the privilege. We lack the access. We lack a lot of things. The people of ancient Israel that Isaiah was preaching to had been displaced and taken into exile. They needed a word of hope. They were so far from the range, they couldn't even remember what it was like to hold a bow metaphorically, to have that arrow and have an intention to be in relationship to God and try to hit the mark. They'd lost all the skills that they had had to be faithful They'd lost most of their memory of what it was like to walk in the blessing of relationship to God and to each other. And Isaiah says to them, I choose you. You are my arrow, polished and smooth and straight, fletchings that are true, a point that is sharp. You are an arrow that will fly to its mark, and I will hold you and I will keep you in my quiver to the appropriate time. You are my intention, says God, and you will preach salvation to the people of Israel. You will preach deliverance. You will preach care. You will preach restoration. You will preach justice. In fact, it is too small a thing that I should just send you to Israel. I am going to send you to all the nations so that the one who is rejected before that one Kings will rise from their seats, and princes will lie prostrate. There is a reordering of the world that is going on, not to might or to power, but to grace and to peace and to the deeper love of God. And you, my child, shall be the agent of that grace. John is with his disciples and he is teaching and he is still processing what has happened in the experience of baptizing Jesus. Remember everything that he was talking about, every promise that he was pointing to, the one who is promised is coming, the one whom I am not fit to untie the thong of his sandal will be here and he will bring the fire and the grace and the love of God. He will bring justice. And John attempts to defer to Jesus and instead winds up baptizing him. John points to him and says, behold, the Lamb of God, and draws attention away from himself, points to the one who is passing by, alerts his disciples and says, you need to go hear what that one is saying. I may be a polished arrow in the quiver of my God, but there, my friends, is the bow itself. From that one, we will be given to the nations. Andrew goes and finds his brother after hearing Jesus speak and says, I think we found him. I think we have found him. I think he's the one. 
come and see. And we tend to make life very complicated when it comes to religion. We, we want to keep things in tradition. We want to keep things in the right form. We want to keep things in our minds and in our hearts organized so that we can be present. We fear as well that sense of it becoming overwhelming. We try to keep it in a goodly place inside our hearts and our minds and our bodies and our lives. But at the same time, we have to be ready for a faith that is always breaking out to a Christ that is always drawing us just a little more profoundly into that moment when we will be released and sent into the world to proclaim a gospel, to hit the mark and land and be present wherever God intends to shoot us, to find ourselves in the midst of people who need to hear the good word. And by word and deed, we are called to be the expression of that good news. How are you a polished arrow in the quiver of our God? Are you prepared to be chosen for that one particular purpose, that one shot that needs to go out into the world and hit the mark? Are you prepared to be handled and held by a master archer who knows exactly where the shot needs to go? And all you have to do is put yourself into that God's hands and allow yourself to be released to wherever God will send us arcing through time and space, arriving in time and space to that moment, this moment, where we are pure and true, our flight has been sure, and we have been able to do the thing that we are called to do, to be a light to the nations, hope to the oppressed, to render care to those in need, to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, to give counsel to those who are in prison, to give care to those who are in distress, to walk alongside as a companion seeking justice for those who have been prevented because of a lack of privilege or a lack of access to find their way. And then we will know that we have done the thing which we have sought to do. We have failed to miss the mark and instead found our target, our target which is the heart of the disciple yet to be the one who has been called and yet has not yet met the risen Lord. I think we found him. Come and see. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I invite you now to stand and join me in an affirmation of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I bid you to come and see the great things God has done. We pray for your church, 
give us as a light to the nations. Sanctify us in Christ Jesus. Call us to be saints and strengthen us to follow Jesus to the end. We pray for our Bishop Chip, Marshall, our rector, and Elizabeth, our associate rector. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of Nigeria. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the reverends Dr. Edward E. Martin, Jr., Dr. Edward J. Murphy, Petrina M. Pyatt, Valerie T. Redpith, Dr. C. Rankin, Edmund W. Zelli, and the members and ministry of the Commission on Black Ministry. Come and see the great things God has done. We pray for this nation and the world. Make your salvation, O oh God, reach to the ends of the earth. May all the peoples know of your faithfulness and your deliverance. Come and see the great things God has done. We pray for all of creation. Give us a sense of awe as we consider all of the works of your hands. We pray for all in the armed forces, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Austin, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. We give thanks for our parish volunteers and lay leaders. We give thanks for the candidates for bishop and for those discerning their call to become the 13th Bishop of New Jersey. You may add your thanksgivings at this time. Come and see the great things God has done. We pray for our local community. Make our footing sure. May our future be secured by your love and faithfulness. Come and see the great things God has done. We pray for all those in need of your healing and strength. Lift them out of the desolate pit. Put in their mouths a new song, a song of praise. May they know just how great for them are your wonders and your plans. We pray for all in our prayer list. Elizabeth, Rick, Christopher and Christine, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Renee, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Anne, Gary, Kay, Rob, Sonny, Betty, Guy, Peter, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, George, AJ, Brandon, Gail, Lisa, Teddy, the O'Donnell family, Peter, Rosemary, Ethel, Wayne, Manel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, and Glenn. You may add your petitions and prayers at this time. Come and see the great things God has done. We pray for those who have died. In your great faithfulness, keep them blameless for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Honor them in your sight forever. Come and see the great things God has done. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning. So one big announcement that I just want to draw everybody's attention to, what season is it besides the season of after the epiphany? It is can-can season at ShopRite. So for two weeks in January and then another two in the summertime, ShopRite runs a huge sale on cans and reduces goods, uh, sometimes by as much as half price to two thirds of the price of what you normally pay. This is a unique opportunity we have to make sure that Alice's Cup and our Mini Mart food pantry are stocked. So as you do your shopping um, in the next week, please do make use of the Can Can sale. Um, visit the station where they have the whole big display, grab extra cans, bring them here to church, drop them off at the office for uh, Mini Mart, drop them off at Alice's this cup when the hours are open. We appreciate the support. This is an essential piece. Um, and every year we make the pitch for spinach and sauerkraut. Those are the two big things that move. And the reason we offer those and we ask for them is because those two items are the great extenders. If you add a can of ShopRite sauerkraut to a box of craft dinner, you turn something that can feed four on a side portion that can effectively becomes one that can feed as twice as many people or have twice as many portions and it becomes much more, much more nutritious. So think of those things as you're walking through, consider what's an extender uh, for someone who is food distressed. We appreciate the support. It is can can season. And no, I am not going to do that in my floor length hem dress. Though I am tempted just to make the point land. And everyone's saying, please, no, Father, don't. It's all fine. So my order to wish is that we stuff Father Marshall's pickup truck on February 11th with cans um, to be able to fill the empty. So um, that is my request for from all of you. If you are coming that day or coming before, um, that would be a true gift. So for an ordination gift, Reverend Liz is asking for sauerkraut. Not necessarily, just canned goods, non-perishable items. We appreciate the support on that. Um, Sunday school is going to be happening between the services now as we move into the regular portion of the year. Um, and if you want to take part and just crib in, you're welcome to do so. Sunday schools for all ages, not just for the kids, and you can enjoy that. Um, but we are going to try to put together some adults offerings as well as we move towards um, Lent. I have been a part of the uh, Refugee Task Force for the diocese, and we are crafting a, a Lenten series called the Displaced that will be exploring the different ways that people find themselves um, displaced, either internally in their country, in their community, or are forced to cross borders. And we're looking at different biblical images of that, everything from Joseph and his family traveling from Canaan um, to uh, Egypt, to Ruth and Naomi, who are women who are living uh, in Moab and have to flee because of losing their, their husbands and their support in that country and having to go because they are hungry. Uh, the displacement of the exile in Babylon, the flight into Egypt, and finally Paul being taken to Agrippa and being sent to Rome as a political prisoner. So there's going to be five weeks of exploring that. So look forward to that. To that. We're going to be doing that on three different levels as adults, as youth, and also as children with units being provided for that. So very excited about that as a resource, both for St. Peter's, but also for the Diocese of New Jersey. So um, we look forward to having that come out. We are getting ready for the election of the next Bishop of New Jersey. That is in two weeks. Um, we're very excited about that. Uh, and uh, Craig is here. He is one of our delegates. Um, if you have any questions, he was there Wednesday night for the meet and greet. All of the meet and greets uh, with our bishops candidates are available on the diocesan YouTube channel. Um, and we'll put a link to that in the e-news that's going to go out on Tuesday. But if you watch those and have any opinions, please speak to either Craig, to Maureen, or to Jean Dabrowski. Um, all three of them are our delegates. They'll be voting on our behalf. And if you have any questions, comments, or if you wish to uh, learn a little bit more about that process. Those of you who may not be familiar with the Episcopal Church and, and, uh, and are with its routines, um, the diocese elects its bishop, and then that election is sent to the wider church to receive consents. And then once those consents have been obtained from a majority of the standing committees and sitting diocesan bishops in the Episcopal Church, then we move to the consecration, which will happen in June. Big party, looking forward to it. So if you have any questions on the election, please do speak to us. Um, we're happy to do that. L Reverend Liz cannot yet vote. She will be uh, canonically resident once she is ordained priest in this diocese. But for now, she's just observing from uh, from the nosebleed seats. And so far, you've enjoyed the process, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you don't have a dog in the fight yet, but soon, soon. All right, um, and please do be aware there's a lot going on in the life of the church. I want to thank our uh, our wardens who uh, hosted a wonderful luncheon for our volunteers in the shop. Um, we had a great gathering last week and really thank them for that. You're going to learn more about the incredible impact that the shop has had on our mission and ministry here at St. Peter's uh, when we get to our annual meeting. I look forward to that, but I'm just so excited to be able to lift them up, thank them and celebrate them, even as I lift you guys up and thank you for celebrating and anchoring our spiritual life. So to our material and mission life is supported by their caring works of faith and their commitment to this lovely experience we have um, being the Church of St. Peter's for Spotswood in the wider world. And in always, please do follow along with us. We have morning and evening prayer. Um, the office is closed tomorrow for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. If you choose and you have the day off to make it a day of service, please do check out different ways you can do that. Um, unfortunately, all of our feeding ministries happen Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we're not gonna have anything specifically here, but please do look into your local situation. And if nothing else, you can get to shop right to the Can Can Sale and buy a few things there and uh, tender them. Luann has ShopRite cards available to you. It's like this magical synergy that's just occurred. You can support the church, feed the hungry, and act in service all within one simple 24-hour period after having said your prayers. God is good or what? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. I'm sorry, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offering a sacrifice to God. And as uh, the, the altar is being set, I also want to say we have music at the next service. If you'd like to linger and sing a few hymns, um, you're welcome to do so. Jessica Pava, who is the spouse of the Reverend Freddie Pava, who is the priest in charge of Trinity Woodbridge and St. James Edison, is going to be with us for the next two weeks offering supply organ work. So we look forward to having her with us, leading us in music at the 10 a.m. services. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Please rise. The congregation is invited to make the responses indicated in italics in the canon of the prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Y así, Padre, 
redimidos por él y hechos un pueblo nuevo por el agua y el espíritu, te ofrecemos estas ofrendas. Santificadas con tu espíritu santo para que sean el cuerpo y la sangre de Jesucristo nuestro Señor. En la noche que lo traicionaron, Jesús tomó pan, lo bendijo, lo partió y se lo dio a sus amigos diciendo, tomen y coman. Este es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria al mío. Después de la cena, tomó el vino, dio gracias y dijo, beban todos. Esto es mi sangre de la nueva alianza que por ustedes y por todos se derrama para el perdón de los pecados. Cada vez que lo beban, háganlo en memoria mía. Remembering his work, now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. The grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from, from generation to generation. And now in the language of our heart, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Are there any birthday or anniversary prayers to offer today? Any birthdays? It's a quiet time around here, I guess. All right. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, be among you and remain with you always. La paz de Dios que sobrepasa todo entendimiento, mantén tus corazones y mentes en el conocimiento y amor de Dios y de su Hijo Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Y la bendición de Dios, el Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, que date entre vosotros y permanece contigo siempre. Go in peace to love and serve Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thanks be to God. Oh, okay. 